Greetings, folks. <clears throat> this is the uh, first video lecture concerning the syllabus. So this is part one. There's likely to be three parts. We'll see how that goes. So um, what I would do is I'd pull up the syllabus and watch what I'm saying to you, and you can refer to the syllabus. I'm just going to go down from top to bottom. Okay, so this is the psychology of abnormal behavior which first of all is somewhat unusual to be offered at the uh, community college, junior college level. Um, the next time you would see this course in perhaps a deeper version would be in a senior and undergrad or a, in graduate school if you uh, move further in your education in psychology. Now, the first thing I'll say is everybody knows, yes, that we're not sure where we're going to be. Uh, we will probably find out soon enough, but I will uh, let you know where the classroom is. You'll see that on uh, uh, you'll see that on uh, Canvas. If and if Oasis is up and running, I will send you an email as well. Okay, so this is a course that talks about how you classify, how you evaluate and diagnose psychological disorders, yes. Um, it is not a treatment course. Uh, and I will offer some insights as to the ways many of these are typically treated, but it is not a focus on treatment course, okay. This is more on diagnosing, and it's a very interesting um, process to do. I love this. I love this stuff. I love this stuff. Okay, so um, this is for psych majors. This is for counseling and social work majors. Anyone who's interested. I've had a number of people take this course who were not in a degree program. They just saw it available and they wanted to take it because they were interested. Uh, it 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 is one that requires you had intro to psych, and my guess is you saw in that or ha uh, discussed in that class a chapter on psychological disorders and probably thought it was pretty interesting. It's one of the more interesting parts of psychology, typically. So, all right. So the first thing to note uh, beyond that is that um, we're going to meet on Mondays and Wednesdays at nine thirty. So uh, I'm sorry. No, not true. Uh, we're going to meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9.30. Uh, on, on alternate semesters, it's on Monday and Wednesday. So uh, I want you to know that if you're going to contact me, you should use the R. Wedemeyer, R-W-E-D-E-M-E-Y-E-R, -E -E at rose.edu email address. Do not use the... Uh, Oasis. I'm sorry. The uh, do not use the uh, um, Raider dot Rose address. We don't get those. The faculty doesn't get those. They go to a different place, and we'd have to, to find them. I have a message on mine that says don't leave <laughs> don't leave an email here because we don't check it. Okay. So um, this is going to be lecture, pretty much exclusively. But we're going to have a lot of film clips, a lot of film clips, and discussion, and so on. So, uh, for those of you who are not attending in person, or who are sporadically attending in person, then you will have these lectures, as I'm doing now, on YouTube. And they will be listed in the, uh, in the module section, okay? All right, so you can just click on those and you will get everything that the class gets. Those videos will be slightly shorter than the class lecture because there's no discussion. I'm just lecturing uh, on YouTube, right? So uh, they'll be somewhat shorter. And the other, the other issue is that I'm not going to play the videos on here like I would in class. So you're going to have to look at those online yourself. All right. So, um, the, uh, t 
textbook is recommended but not required. It's the ninth edition, and I've listed for you the ISBN for the loose leaf version. Uh, the book is called Abnormal Psychology, Clinical Perspectives on Psychological Disorders by Susan Whitbourne. It's a good book, but it's recommended and not required. Okay, It's on reserve in the library if you want to pull it out and read it. Um, the Loose Leaf is the cheapest of the group, um, but again, you do not have to buy this. You can do fine without it. It's just a much deeper treatment of the th kinds of things we're going to talk about. In some ways, we're going to treat things deeper than the text does, but the text is more comprehensive across things that we just don't have time for in our course. Okay, so I want you to be able to understand the difference between normal and abnormal behavior, the things that would constitute a... Uh, a disorder when does it become a disorder at what level and what does that mean um, something about the critical thinking process the flow chart in your brain you need to follow in order to diagnose diagnosing is a really special science-based art form and heavily influenced by experience it's something that very few clinicians are superb at um, uh, many clinicians are not very good at it. I don't want to get myself in trouble, but that's probably true. Uh, yeah, many are fair, but you're going to be you're going to be in good shape when you finish this, at least as far as the things we talk about. Okay. All right. The, the, the diagnoses we talk about. We can't talk about all of them. There's hundreds of them. Okay. Classroom policies. Um, are things we have to have because we're a group and we need some uh, some uh, decorum and uh, rules of conduct, okay? Uh, just to say them, I think we all know what they are. Raise your hand when you want to ask a question or make a comment. Uh, please don't dominate by asking question after question after question. Give other people a chance. Come to class on time. Oh, my doggie's pulling up my string here, my cord. Come to class on time and... Uh, stay for the whole time. If you know you're going to leave early, then let me know that and sit at the back of the room nearest the door so you don't disrupt people or at least in the least amount possible. Please don't have ongoing conversations with people who are next to you. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is it's disruptive to the people around you. You may not know that, but it is. The second thing is it kind of defeats the social distancing issue because uh, often when you're talking with someone next to you, you sort of lean in towards each other. That happens all the time in class, and so you wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Um, stay awake, of course. Uh, and don't eat meals in class. Please don't. You can drink, but what I want you to do is to use a straw so you can slip it in under your mask. We'll talk about masks in a minute. And leave your phones on vibrate, please. You can use them for critical reasons. But they should not ring, and they should only be consulted in the case of really important things, not constantly just to get or send text messages. That's not critical. It has a tendency to disturb people around you, and it's distracting to you, believe it or not. Okay. Um, and then observe the social distancing, wear the face masks, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So, uh, Rose State College allows for people who are officially enrolled in the course to be in class, but people who are not, like guests or children, are not permitted. Um, emotional support animals are not permitted, but service animals are permitted. You might want to go over to special services in the library and get that taken care of and made it official. Now, because this is a flex course, one last time, you can attend or not attend. You can attend one day or no days, all days, two days, whatever you want. That's up to you. That gives you the flexibility to uh, handle the course in a way that best fits your needs and your time frames and, and your responsibilities, okay? 
It is not necessary to tell me you won't be in class because I'll know when I call the roll that you're not there, if you're not there. So uh, the reason we want to take roll, however, is not just to know who's there when they are in the class, but if we need to contact Trace, should someone become infected by the virus, when we can have some additional information to do that. Well, here's the thing. If you feel ill, particularly if you feel like you're getting an upper respiratory infection, so you may be coughing when you did not before, you have a temperature of 100.4, 100.4 or higher. I'd say if you have anything over 100, I would, say, I would be cautious. If you can't breathe, if you're, if you're not exerting yourself and you're having trouble getting a breath, boy, I, I wouldn't be coming to class. I wouldn't do that. And I would seek out medical advice on and get tested. I think testing is going to come online in a bigger way in the weeks ahead. That's just an estimate on my part. Okay. So, some good things about not coming to class. You can have shorter lectures to watch online, and you can do them as you want, when you want, even on your phone. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, another good thing, you can uh, have the schedule that you have arranged the way you want it. That's a good thing. You won't be able to ask questions immediately like you would if you were in class. That's not such a great thing. But you can ask them through an email to me or before and after class or whatever. Okay. Now, um, let's talk a little more about face masks. The th it's required by Midwest City, required by Rose State College. And so you have to have a mask and not just any mask, not just a, a, a something draped over your face. It's got to be an official mask. It can't have ventilation ports that go out when you breathe out. That, that's a dust mask. That's not good for the virus. You need a mask that pinches a little bit over the nose. It has a little bit of a tight part here that some, usually with a little wire that bends on it or at least drapes tightly and then covers nose, mouth, and then goes down below the, 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 the uh, chin, okay? Now what that does is a couple of things. One is when you breathe out, it causes a plume to, of your breath to go up and out to the sides, which keeps you from expelling what could be virus directly in front of you. That is an advantage in not giving others the virus. If you have it and you might be asymptomatic and not know you have it, that's the bad part about this virus. We have none of the symptoms I was talking about. It gives you a little bit of protection against someone who is breathing out or if you encounter something in the environment when you walk through a, a, a breath plume and there's some virus in it. Okay, now here's the thing. When you first put your, a, a new mask on or a, a mask that's clean, you put it on any way you want to, but when you take it off, you take it off from behind your ears and set it down. Don't touch the front of the mask because if if you've been around other people and you've been around someone with the infection, you wouldn't know it, but there's viral particles and so on in, on your mask. And then if you touch that, when you're taking your mask off, then you're going to inf infect other surfaces, people, or even give yourself the virus when you didn't have it. So uh, that's the way to do this. Okay. Okay, um, let me go to the next video and see you in part two.